Okay, so today we are at Nellis Air Force Base in Microsoft Flight Simulator and we're going to have a look at the Tomcat and see how it goes. So I've loaded it out with a fairly standard load. It's early in the morning at Nellis. And so a quick look around the Tomcat. You can see it looks pretty impressive. If we scroll around the aircraft slowly. See there's a heat haze behind it pouring out of the engines. makes some of these little propeller planes look a bit um, ordinary doesn't it okay so we are not going to be comparing this against the Tomcat in DCS for obvious reasons this is a just a fun aircraft to fly around we are going to take it through its paces though and see how to operate it and see how it behaves in Microsoft Flight Simulator okay so first thing we're going to do is come off the parking brake ease the engines forwards and we're rolling We're just going to taxi out at Nellis to the runway. We'll taxi down to the far end. We want quite a long takeoff roll. Hopefully, this um, bulldog is going to let us go first. Give him a bit of a wide berth. What are we doing in terms of distance to the end of the runway? Here it comes. <laughs> the wings are sweeping in. So, something I have figured out. I've had a quick look at this. This is my first proper flight with it, but I've had a quick look to map the controls. The flap lever, when the flaps are full up on your flap lever, that is automatic wing sweep. So it will try and stow the aircraft. If you put it one movement of flap down, then that pushes the wings to maximum sweep. And then from there on, accurate with the real Tomcat, actually, once you're at full sweep, you can use the flaps. But there's nothing wrong there so we're going to go for full flaps for takeoff because we're quite heavy we've got two phoenix missiles hanging off of us and a full complement of sparrows and two drop tanks okay we'll center up on the runway I have no idea where the afterburner kicks in, so let's find that out now. There, we're going to go for military thrust, which we should be able to. In the F-14B, we should be able to get enough speed up without afterburner to take off. So 110, 120 knots, 130. We'll start to try and rotate 150 and see what happens. It came off the road runway very easily actually. So gear up. And so flaps are just coming up that final stage. We'll keep the wings out for the moment. It certainly looks the part, doesn't it? Climbing at 230 knots. Let's begin a left turn. So we we'll just do a very simple circuit to begin with.
interesting, so that isn't behaving how I expected. So it appears the wings are fully automatic all the time. If, as long as you don't have flaps, I guess. I wonder if it will retract the flaps automatically at speed. Let's see if the air brake works. Yep, the air brake looks like it's in the right place. We're also getting spoilers on the wings. So that should cause the wings to sweep as they have. Okay, let's have a look, see what sort of speed we're doing. So we're back down to it. So it's about maybe 250 knots then that causes the wings to sweep back. speed gliding down downwards so we'll use some air brake to keep control of the speed and we'll go for the right runway so let's just see how this behaves So it seems to have some sort of automation of HUD modes to do with the switching on the, the landing mode, to do with having the gear down. So air brakes are off, flaps are full. The velocity vector doesn't seem to follow where we're actually going, which is a shame. We're obviously going for the ground in front of the runway at the moment. But the velocity factor thinks we're going to hit the middle of the runway, which is absolute rubbish. So we're just going to do a touch and go. And then we'll get some speed on and see how it behaves. Just um, scrape the undercarriage on the lights. Full reheat. Flaps up. Gear up. That's pretty cool. It kicked the dirt up. Not sure I'm too impressed with the um, the vortices. It's better than nothing. And yeah, the um, the engine effect of the afterburner could be better. It's got far too much roll rate for the, the amount of stores we're carrying and the speed we're going. So we're about to stall out over the top of this climb. It certainly looks the part though, doesn't it?
need some music from Top Gun now, obviously. <laughs> we'll get a copyright strike if we even think about it. I don't know if anybody has saw, seen the news today. Somebody wrote a, a short story that the Top Gun movie was based upon. And it was actually licensed for the original movie, and they, the licensing ran out because of the delay because of COVID. And the follow-up to Top Gun was made without that license in place and the author of the story or the author's family have gone after the movie studio for hundreds of or millions of dollars oh, we actually get a shock cone up here for the same barrier will it go silent I wonder doesn't look like it has does it so we're doing Mac 1.08 so yeah so it doesn't go silent that's a shame Rather bizarre engine effect. Let's oh, I do like that though. So the twistiness of this is related to speed as well. So how high can we go, do you think? same barrier. So 45,000 feet. There are stories of Tomcats doing zoom climbs to meet um, Russian bombers. So you know doing uh, photo reconnaissance of them and obviously turning them around. So yeah there are stories of the Tomcats doing this trick of zoom climbing to altitude let's see if we can spin it will it let us spin doesn't look like it level this out to 30 or thousand feet we're doing Mac 0.7 ish and obviously we're losing that speed so I just want to see if I can get it to depart controlled flight because a Tomcat should quite easily fast enough and we've lost the engines though we have managed to stall the engines so I'm just firing them back up heading slowly back towards Nellis while we're doing this Can we get it to spin? It won't let us. That's probably a limitation of the Microsoft Flight Simulator flight model, to be honest. It's not going to do departing from the airflow too much. And we killed the engines again. Oh, and oh, we nearly spun it then. That was nearly it. Right, I'm not going to try it this low because we won't get out. Could we dead stick it from here? That's the question. Two hundred knots, eight thousand feet. Where I think ground's about 
four or five thousand here. I'm just firing up the engines. He probably could have gone dead stick. Because, yeah, it's accelerating in the glide. So I'm just throwing the air brakes out to actually slow us down. So 200 knots, I'll drop the wheels, or the gear, I should say. There we go, gear down. Air brakes off, flaps out. It's a shame the velocity vector doesn't really work because you can't use it then to judge approaches. It obviously becomes incredibly important for carrier landings. Although you would use the ball anyway for a carrier landing. And you could use the Pappy lights in our situation here. So this is obviously telling us we're slow, but we're doing it on purpose. Well, it's easy to control. That's the one huge saving grace of it, I guess. The wheel brakes aren't up to much, though. We've just gone ripping straight past the, the taxiway. So we'll carry on rolling. Flaps up. Does anybody know where the next taxiway is at Mellis? Surely we don't have to go to the far end of the runway. I think it's just coming in a moment. And yeah, it was the far end of the runway. back in, so final look at the Tomcat. It's good fun to fly. Obviously it's very very limited in what you can do with it in Flight Simulator because it has no weapons that work or no systems that work properly. Uh, so if, yeah, if you're wanting to do that you can go to DCS obviously but that's going to cost you a significant amount of money to get you know the, the steady level Tomcat in DCS but if you want to blow stuff up, that's what you're going to have to do, I'm afraid. But this one's not bad at all. Unfortunately, Nellis looks nothing like Nellis out of the box in Flight Simulator. You should have um, covers, rows and rows of covers along here with rows and rows of F-15s and you know whatever's here taking part in, in transport planes and logistics aircraft. Obviously, none of it's here. I'll do a video in DCS at some point to show people the difference between the environment, because it's a, a, there is a payware upgrade for DCS. Again, it's payware, so you pay for what you get. But there's a, a payware upgrade for DCS that gives you the entire Nellis range, so you get all of the US air bases on the range and you get their buildings done to a fairly high degree of accuracy. But for free, 
can't really complain, can you? Flight Simulator gives you the world to go and play around in. So we're going to park up this end today. Wheel brakes on, and we are going to leave the aircraft there. It's pretty good, though, isn't it? Looks the part. I think that's the way you could describe it. It certainly looks the part. Okay, it may not be the most accurate aircraft in the world, but it looks good. Okay, that was the uh, the F-14 Tomcat in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If nothing else, it makes for nice posters, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, I'll leave it there.